Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Today I'm going to be doing a short video on how to set a forced off input on a Daikin indoor unit for some sort of an external protection device. Specifically, I'm going to talk about condensate overflow switches that may be installed in an auxiliary drain pan that would mount underneath a ducted unit in the event that perhaps the main drain line got stopped up and we started overflowing water out of the drain pan of our indoor unit into an auxiliary pan, we would want an external protection protection device, a float switch mounted inside that pan that when the pan fills with water, the switch rises, it makes and it turns our unit off and generates an error code. We're going to talk about how to set that up, a couple simple steps to make it happen. Today we're going to be using our Navstat, our BRC1E73. Um, the reason I'm using this stat is the most common we see out there and it's very user friendly and easy to navigate, but there's other stats that you can still do these settings with, but this one is just a li little easier device to navigate. So the first thing we need to do is stroke any key to light up the screen. So we'll just press the menu button. Now we need to get in our field settings menu, which we do that by after our screen's illuminated, we hold the cancel button down for about five or six seconds. There we go. And now we're gonna scroll down to field settings. We're gonna enter our field settings and we're gonna start out in mode 20. You can see it says there. Now we're going to scroll up to mode 22. You'll see in the side shot here that's going to show our field settings. We're going to go to mode 22. Now we're going to go to first code 1. First code 1 is set to 1-01. What that tells me is that this is set for a normally open contact closure across our T1, T2 wiring terminals on our indoor unit. On every indoor unit, you're going to have a few things. You're going to have a F1, F2 that goes out to our condensing unit or if it were a heat recovery system out to our branch selector box. A P1, P2 like PAL1, PAL2, that is going to go to our, our nav stat or whatever our room controller, maybe it's a simplified stat. And then you're going to have the T1, T2 as in Tango. That is going to be our safety device if we choose to use that. It ships normally open contact. Now, the cool thing about the Daikins is I can go in through this Navstat and I can change that contact closure to normally open or normally closed. So there's a few different options you see in the field settings menu. It's selected and defaulted to setting 01, which is gonna be a normally open set of contacts, but we're gonna set this up, say as we had an auxiliary drain pan mounted under our unit with a float switch in that would raise up normally would be a closed contact and as soon as that float raises it opens the contact which will then generate alarm so we're going to tell this navstat to change my normally open contact to a normally closed contact and it's as simple as again scrolling over we're in mode 22 i'm going to scroll until i get to 101 i'm going to set that to 103. select yes and now it's saying i'm a normally closed device if that contact goes open or what's going to happen on our system because I don't have anything wired into T1, T2, it's normally open. Now it's going to be closed. It's going to think it's in an alarm situation. But we're talking about having a normally closed safety device wired across T1, T2 and the change we would make to this Navstat would be to set this mode 22, first code 1, to 1-03. Now our contact is normally closed. So if the switch rises and it opens that contact, now our unit's going to alarm. It's going to generate an alarm on our Navstat and be flashing to tell us that we're in a forced off alarm. And there's a couple things you can do to clear that. Obviously, remove the water from the pan, fix the problem. If you were in a situation where you had to get the system up and running immediately, maybe you had a drain issue, you can go back and change the configuration of this to make it normally open again. The only problem is now you've taken your safety out of play. So after we've made this change, now you're gonna be in an alarm situation if your pan fills with water and your switch rises and it opens that contact closure. We're gonna to need to close that contact to resume normal operation, which we would need to vacuum out the drain pan, clear the restriction in the drain line, and make sure the unit's draining properly. Again, this would only happen is if we had an external protection device wired across T1, T2. If we had a normally open switch, we wouldn't need to change anything. It wouldn't necessarily generate the same sort of alarm we're talking about for an emergency shutdown because if we've got water flooding out, we want emergency shutdown. Therefore, I'm gonna change this to normally closed. I'm gonna install a normally closed flow switch 
that opens on a rise. If we ever have the situation where our drain stops up, it fills that pan with water, it's gonna shut the system off to keep us from running so we don't overflow that pan and flood into the tenant space. And then we're gonna to need to go out and correct the issue and then the unit will return to normal operation. That's just one of the handy little things you can set up on these nav stats. With the indoor units, again, pretty much every indoor unit is going to have a T1, T2 input. It can be used for a lot of things. The most common things we see it used for here is, again, ducted units, auxiliary pan mounted underneath the unit to catch water in case the main drain stopped up. Then you want a safety switch that's going to shut the system down if that auxiliary pan fills up as well. And that's what we just said on this Navstat. Really simple to go back and change again if you ever needed to. Just reference the field settings table and set it back to mode 22, first code 103, back to 101, and now you're back to a normally open protection device. But just wanted to share that with you guys. It's a handy one we see out there a lot, and it causes a lot of confusion sometimes, but it's a pretty simple setup once you get used to it. And uh, if you guys have any more topics you would like us to discuss, be sure to send them our way. Make sure you subscribe and like our channel, and we'll keep them coming. <music>